Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back to this channel, learning incrementally, one question a day. Hmm. Today, question that we are going to deal with is the classify salivary glands. Describe submandibular salivary gland in detail. So for this, the answer begins with like this. Salivary glands are exo gland glands. They are compound glands that is that have main duct with many branches. Histologically, salivary glands are tubular acinar, meaning have tubules as well as acinar in nature. Acinar is the functional unit and or the terminal secretory producing unit, secretory unit. Classification based on size, salivary glands are classified as major salivary gland, minor salivary gland. Here you put parotid gland, serous, submandibular, mixed serous, that is serous predominance, sublingual, mixed, mucus predominance. Minor salivary glands, again you have the Mixed labial salivary gland, the lingual glands, anterior, which is purely mucus, posterior, which is mixed. Palatine, purely mucus. Glossopalatine, purely mucus. Buccal gland, serous. Lingual glands, anterior glands, posterior glands. Here you have anterior is the gland of blandin and mucus. Posterior, you have mucus as well as serous. Serous is the bone abdor groups of salivary glands associated with the circumvalid papilla. Based on histology, salivary glands could be classified as Serous salivary glands, mucous salivary glands, and mixed. With examples of each, serous salivary glands has more watery fluid secretion, whereas mucous glands secrete more viscous, thick fluid. The submucous salivary gland is a J-shaped gland divided into a superficial part and a deep part by the myelohyoid muscles. By the myelohyoid muscles. Location, it is in the posterior surface of the mandible. Above the myeloid hyaline line is the submandibular fossa, superficial to the myelohyoid muscles. The duct of the submandibular duct is the vartans, which opens into the sublingual papilla lateral to the lingual frenum. By caranocla sublingual is opening of the vartan duct. The blood supply is via the lingual and the facial arteries. Lymphatics is the deep cervical and the jugular group of nodes. The nerve sympathetic supply is by the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. Parasympathetic superior salivary nucleus, geniculate ganglion, facial nerve, by other cord out infani and joins the lingual nerve to relay in the submandibular ganglion and the postganglionic fibers pass to the submandibular gland. The sympathetic fibers from the T1 spinal cord lateral horn, the postganglionic fibers jump the cervical uh, cervical sympathetic ganglion to reach the submandibular gland. Histology, you find a capsule, okay? Connective tissue capsules and there are septa, invagination, dividing the entire gland into lobes. In gla inside the globes, you find both serous and mucous glands. You find structures called as demulones. The serous cells of submandibular glands the gland is covered by an outermost connective tissue for capsules, forms infolding called a septa, forms the lobes. It is a mixed gland with more of serous glands, less of mucus as an eye. The muc there are specific structures called as demulones, which are nothing but mucus cells surrounded by serous cells, C-shaped serous cells, capping the mucus glands. They have, the serous cells have a lateral and basal serrations projections. The serous secretory granules have Dense core and matrix sometimes are crescent shaped as in demulones. The saliva secretion of submandibular is viscous with increase in glycosylated substance and highest saliva secretion. About 60% of all secretions are produced by uh, submandibular gland. Clinical they are more clinical significances because of their torturous nature of the salivary duct as well as the predominance of a comparison a lot of mucus, they are prone for stones formations. Because of stone formation, they are also more prone for cyst, that is mucosils. Deposition of stones and wartens, they are against the gravity, has mucus content, hence they are more prone for stones. And such stones may predispose to formation of mucosils or salivary retention cyst. And they are more again prone for inflammation and infection because of this. That is the clinical significance. With that, we come to the end of the discussion on submandibular salivary gland, anatomy and features and 
histology. All should be combined. Okay, divide five five marks. For that, you have to work it up. Stay connected with this channel to learn another question another day. Learn incrementally at least one question a day. Happy learning.